and good morning, one and all. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Speaking Out, Exposing Corruption and Incompetence. Today, Wednesday, the 18th day of October 2023. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Share the life. You know the drill by now. Share the life. I know that some of you may be tired having been in the schoolyard um, from very early last night. People are in the schoolyard from last night. So we'll share the life that others know that class calling, as we would say, class or school calling, share the life and we are going to be ready to go. My colleague, my co-defendant is in the studio. We're hoping that we have an uninterrupted session um, this morning. So we are ready. We are raring to go. We have so much to tell you um, today. Again, I know that we're going to be running into some um, time issues because we have so much to tell you. But as you know, we have said, we're going to bring you the news and um, and the information. And if it is that we have to come another day, then we will definitely do so. But yes, yes, I noted the program was scheduled very early since last night. And as early as last night, many, many students, I suspect it was a record number of students in the schoolyard waiting um, for the this morning at 11 for to get into the classroom. Well, you know the classroom is open even before, um, so that you can get in and you can be comfortable. But we have so much to tell you. We want you to relax, get your Cokes, get your popcorn, get your beer, whatever beverage will relax you, get it and sit back, strap in and, and uh, be ready for the information. So much, so much to tell. You know, first we have to say, give praise and thanks. This is the delay, this is the day that the Lord has made, let's rejoice and be glad in it. We have to celebrate being in the land of the living. We must always celebrate being in the land of the living. It's a privilege to wake and to see a new day. And for that, we must always give praise and thanks. So many persons are not this fortunate. And you know, talking about giving praise and thanks on persons that have been fortunate. Um, this morning I woke up and well, long after I woke up, I saw the news, the sad news of the passing of Javon Stevens. Um, he's from Region 6. That is East Borby. He's a PNC activist there. Well-known, very popular. One person told me this morning, a decent, decent guy. Um, he said that despite the politics, he was somebody who was respected. But the word came through this morning that he passed. I don't know the circumstances. But yeah, Javon Stevens, some PNC activist in Region 6, passed away either this morning or last night. I want to take this opportunity to express condolences to his surviving relatives, friends, and um, colleagues. So that is why I am continue to say we have to give praise and thanks for being in the land of the living. No one knows the hour. No one knows the hour. Speaking about that, you're gonna, you would have seen in the news too yesterday, this terrible, terrible war that is going on now between Israel and the, um, they say, um, the, 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 what they call the terrorist group. You know, I've always said, you gotta watch these labels, you know. You have to watch these labels because one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. I always remember back in the 80s, SWAPO, the Southwest People's Organization led by, Nils, um, by Sam Najuma, was described as a terrorist organization. Nelson Mandela himself was described as a terrorist. So you have to watch um, these labels. Um, so yeah, 500, according to writers um, last night, 500, um, some hospital was bombed in the Gaza Strip there. And they say about 500 persons uh, were killed. Now that is a, that got to be a war crime. Whoever is responsible, the, is, the, 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 um, the people from Palestine are blaming Israel. Israel is blaming some other group. Whoever is responsible, that must be classified as a war crime to have bombed an hospi uh, hospital. Killing, well, the, the figure is not clear, but in the vicinity of well, hundreds, some people said 200 plus. As I said, writers reported yesterday afternoon um, about 500 persons working. So there's even more reason that we have to give praise and thanks to being in the land of the living. You know, as we said, it, people were here since last night, and therefore, um, we have to always 
um, run through the roll call this morning. I'm going to try to fly through the roll call so that we can get into the program. We have so many persons in the schoolyard uh, last night that uh, they, I am sure that the, the number of students in the schoolyard last night was a record number. I'm sure it was a record number. Some people said they were using repellents to keep mosquitoes away. They were playing cards and all manner of things. The first person in, um, to, in class checking in was Quinn Lewis. I can't recall seeing this name before. Perhaps um, he did appear, but he's commenting now for the first time. Quinn was here since 8.37 last night. Then we had Isabella, a regular. Vibart was here. Sydney came in. We had Joan. Um, she came in at 8.58. Brian there next. And Leslie um, came in very early too. Um, Leslie came in last night. Uh, what he says here? He, say he, he, um, he, he says, Leslie says that he, he the patrol, what he say? The patrol in the schoolyard tonight. Sign up students to come in for the protest tomorrow. That is the, uh, the protest that we have mounted. Then we had Courtney was in last night. Original black man, uh, Mandela, Kenneth, Family Music, Wayne, um, we have uh, Tilula, George, uh, Raul, Carlton, my squad mate, Rahim came in very early, 1032, say playing marbles and all of that. Patricia, uh, Ian, a regular, Lucius is here. Kimi, um, check in. Setred is here. Ballad, from all the way from Linden. I uh, said too many mosquitoes, too many biting insects. So he um, left and he came back. Philip is here. They say sleep in the schoolyard, waiting for school door to open to get a front seat. I hope you did get a front seat. Ruth came in. Then we had Emerson um, is here. Tune in from Manhattan, New York. Walking in night shift. Tune in. Earl, Colin um, came in and he greeting his classmates. Stan is here uh, greeting his classmates. Um, Malvok 5. Ex-Inspector Mentor is here. Patricia um, is here in class. Floyd, 10688. Very early. He really came in early this morning. The last person last night was Malvok um, at, at, at 11.53. And the first person this morning was Patricia. Then Floyd, Barbara is here. Brennan, JK. Welcome, JK. Welcome. Then we have Winston from the UK in class. Sean Rabenjanat, a regular ex-sergeant, is always here. YouTuber is here from Brooklyn. Um, Earl again. Wayne from the UK is in the house. Welcome, welcome, UK. Those from the UK. Hazel is here as well. Evelina, Ivanlina, Pamela, Denise, Ulrich is here. Bart, Corinne, Tessa. Tessa don't ever miss a class. Very dedicated student. Francis is here. Joy. Jaco from Georgia is here. Princess Earl from Lamar Springs. She says she had blackout on Monday. We said, can we have blackout too on Monday? Um, Court is in the house. Monica. Lyndon from Patterson, New Jersey, 13033. George Calder is in the house. East Coast man, BV man. Then we had... Um, Charlene, regular, regular, don't ever miss class. Uh, Carville, my next squad mate, is here. Aileen, and Aileen says here that tomorrow is our birthday. So let's take this opportunity to wish her in advance a happy, happy birthday tomorrow, Aileen. Vernon is in the house. Stefan is in the house. Maureen, Isabella, Orin, Colin from Queens, Sandra. Is in is, is here. Then we have Kerry, speaking truth to power, is in the house. Uh, Doreen from Canada, Carol, Terence from Canada, Eric from New Jersey, Felicia is here. Evelyn, we had Maury from New York, Gordon from um, Canada. Then we had the last man in before we went live was Chilo. Chilo, I don't know which part of the world you are, but I know you are a traveling man. Then when we went live on YouTube, on, on, on Facebook, Stian, Anna Nelson, Winston, um, Henry saying good morning. Colleen, um, Colleen Skeet Price, a, straight, a new name. 
Anne, and uh, Anne again. Ether is here, regular. Leticia is here, and uh, Karen is in the house. Lynette from Barbados, regular. Angel, Angeli, Gary, uh, my old time uh, cricket friend, Gary, used to play cricket with him at TSU, very good half spinner. Very welcome, welcome, one and all. And let me let me say, as I said, continue to share the light. The numbers have skyrocketed in the past few minutes. Continue to share the light, and we are going to bring you um, the, the, the the news that you want to know. As I've said, Mr. Conway, my co-defendant, is in the studio. Let me bring him in to um, greet you. CC, good morning and welcome. Good morning to all. Happy to be in the land of the living. They could delay God's work, but they can't stop it. The work of the Lord has got to go on, and I'm happy that I'm being able to... Well, we, we, are, we are overjoyed that you're here, and that um, as it is now, we can hear you clearly. We can see you as well. And there's, at this point, there seems to be no impediment to your participation in this program. I'm always overjoyed when I have you here um, to share this platform with me. So welcome, welcome, uh, my brother. Chelsea, we're hearing everybody loud and clear, which is which is good. We had some yeah. issues over the past two weeks, so it's good to know that you can hear me and you can hear CC loud and clear. I hope it continues for the entire uh, entirety of this program. But uh, moving on, CC, I know um, there, there was an issue that you wanted to talk about this flying visit. Let me let me hear something about this flying visit that you wanted to talk about on Monday. All right. Let, let, let me make a thanks for giving me the opportunity to give a, a flying start. Now we we heard about mismanagement, financial mismanagement in the Guyana Police Force. We heard about fraud, three hundred million, and all sorts of things. We saw the head of the admin assistant commissioner. Brutus and the former PS from Ministry of Home Affairs, who is now in who is now in labor. I hope that she will produce some goods. And quite recently, we had a, a flying visit from the head of admin, Assistant Commissioner Brutus, himself and, and two others. I think one they say is an engineer, and, and one is an architect. Here's what happened, man, and it was very shocking. And the Sunday boarded a plane at Ogo. The plane flew to quarantine Skeldon Gaisuku Airstrip. They came off the plane, plane waited on them. They went to Springlands Police Station, examined the, some project they have going on there. Went back on the plane. The plane flew to Rosal Kanji Airstrip. They came off, they visited Wim Police Station, they visited New Amsterdam Police Station, and another location which I will not discuss. And the plane waited for them all the time, and the is a special charter, and they boarded back at Kanji and flew, flew back to Oglo. I know the names of the persons who were on the team, but I will not disclose just as all the police disclosing suspects and can't charge and, and, and anybody. But the thing is, you know, that over the weekend, we had the, His Excellency, the President, and a team of ministers went to Borbis there. And they didn't fly, you know. The President didn't fly. They went by road. All of them went by road and returned to their respective location by road. But here's it. An Assistant Commissioner, utilizing government funds, flying to Springlands to visit some project, flying to Rosal, visiting some, checking some, some, some project. And I don't know who paid for the charter, whether it was a Ministry of Mufres charter, whether it was a, the, the police charter. I know the airline, uh, you know, but the thing is so ridiculous. Total misuse of taxpayers' money an assistant commissioner flying to Barbies and flying, flying back to, 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 to his base. I, I, don't, I don't know what, what, what was going on. We spoke about already about mismanagement of public funds. We talk about fraud in the Ghana police force. And here it is, an assistant commissioner with a team of two others flying to Springlands, flying to Kanji, 
and flying back to the base on, on the East Coast here. Total mismanagement of the funds. Total mismanagement of our money, the taxpayers' money. Because I'm sure a chart of plane, a taxpayers have to pay. So I want, you know, I wonder who authorized that um, flying visit. I wonder who authorized the flying visit. But you know, strange things are happening in the country. Strange things are happening um, in the courts. So when you bring these things to light, they they, they, they call you out with all kind of lame. They come up with all kind of lame excuses. And you know, I wanted to also in, in, um, inform our students because last um, when we met on Monday, I would have told you that we had I had a Kate court matter um, yesterday, Tuesday. Well, the update in that is that as I was preparing to travel to uh, well not travel to go online because I would have attended virtually, I got word from my lawyer that this matter this is the sexual offences allegations, which is alleged that I touched a female officer on her legs three times without permission. I was informed by my attorney that the matter is now set for or postponed to December the 5th. The magistrate is supposed to deliver a ruling on this matter, and it is now put off to for December the 5th. So charges filed since um, 21, the 21st of May, uh, the 19th actually, um, of May 2021, and that is what is going on. That is what is going on. Delay and delay. And, and I'm not blaming the, the, the magistrate, you know, because if you notice in today's paper, one of the dailies today, the recently um, constituted Judicial Service Commission is now making an advertisement for persons to apply to become magistrates. So those, those magistrates, you have are overworked. The judges too, they are overworked. And um, so you, know, you can't blame them. You have to blame the system. The system is pressuring them, and therefore people, litigants, defendants, accused, have to suffer and wait um, long, long, long for justice. Long. And you know the saying goes, justice delayed is justice denied. But I'm not, you know, I have said to people, I am not going to be frustrated. I am sure, I am confident of what the outcome will be. And I will just sit back and relax and wait for the outcome. But you know, I have said repeatedly that this is no done as you like, you know. This is no done as you like. And another and another sad note I should have mentioned, I, I got up this morning and I was a bit sad, a little overcame with a little bit of emotion because today marks uh, 22 years since my loving mother passed away on the uh, 18th of October, 2001. So I, I, I remember that day very, very well. I posted something on Facebook, and I am I'm appreciative of all those who have expressed their condolences um, to me and, and, and all of that. So 22 years, even though it has been that long, um, I am still, I still miss um, my, 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 dear, daily, my dear departed uh, mother. Yeah, um, Carl, justice delayed, justice delayed, but it's not going to be denied. You're correct. So moving on, moving on. I know you people, Ulrich, Gavin, Jaco, Aileen. I know you're following the cricket very closely. Oh God, one upset where Afghanistan defeated England, and then yesterday we had another upset. Netherlands defeated South Africa. So, and I don't think that that is the last upset for this tournament. You know, I don't think it is the last upset. Um, they, they, there's a match going on here now. With Afghanistan and um, New Zealand, they kept as um, Afghanistan kept New Zealand to 288, I think it is. But they're gonna struggle to make that runs. They're gonna struggle. The last score I saw what 102 or something like that for four. They're gonna struggle to get to that because New Zealand um, has good bowling. So let's see where the match will go. But the cricket getting nice. There are some exciting matchups coming up. Very exciting matchups. They are, the game is very, very nice. So let's, us cricket fans, watch and see. Now moving on, um, the, well, you know, yesterday, as I've said, we had a protest, we continue our protest outside of the Venezuelan um, embassy. And this protest is in relation to the claim by Venezuela, the spurious, the false claim um, to Esequibo. They are claiming that the security belongs to them, and there have been some aggressive maneuvers. 
they have been, according to report, some aggressive maneuvers. And before I bring in, and, and let me say this, yesterday we were there and we were joined by a few other persons and we welcome them. We welcome, we are planning to go there again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And we are gonna welcome people to come. And again, we say this is not about politics. And you know, the, the, the sad thing is that only recently, it, with relation to what is going on in uh, Palestine, we saw Guyanese protesting what is going on in Palestine. I saw someone making a speech. The person looks like the former president, um, Dalai Ramatar, right? And making, um, pro they, they're protesting the war between Israel and the uh, Hamas and whoever. But here it is. We have our territorial integrity being threatened by Venezuela. And you're not hearing a word from these people. You're not hearing a word from them. But we are going to go there again tomorrow from 10 o'clock, as I said. The, play, the, the, the embassies between um, in uh, Thomas Street, between Church Street and the Kwamina Road. We are going to make our presence felt and we are going to continue to call out because we, we, we are demanding that Venezuela um, stop their aggression. And we are also saying that the Guyana government need to uh, come out, educate and inform the public as to what is going on. I'm talking about that. I saw, we, after the Monday we mentioned this thing on our program, we were very vociferous in what we said about what is going on on the border. And mon, uh, Tuesday night, Monday night, Tuesday morning, the Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force issued a statement. And let me let me read part of what he, he says. Um, let me bring in CC while they look for the document. CC, I'm sure you want to comment on that aspect. Yeah, but before that, uh, let me just backtrack a bit you know in relation to the death anniversary of your mother i attended the, the funeral on the east bank there and i can remember yeah you you broke down you cried and there was a police couple saying so i know mrs slow could cry you know i know you could cry so tell us mrs slow is human he, he make out a stone he's human and he get emotions he can cry him well, anyway the, 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 and she said, okay, I know, I know, I understand. But getting back to the protest, you know, people saying that we, over and over again, that we foreign-minded. Here it is. We have the aggression by the Venezuelans and not a word coming out from the government. And here is it. We have people who are protesting in large numbers about the, 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 the war between the Israeli and the Palestinians. Here, Guyanese protesting and being addressed by you know, former president of Guyana, Ramatar. Be really, really reform minded. And I believe, you know, like the Jamaicans, you must be bad a yard and bad abroad. Let me look after home affairs first before we look after foreign affairs, you know. It it, it is ridiculous. And 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 after you 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 read the, the statement coming out of the army, I'm I'm gonna say some other things. Yes, um Yes, my brother, thanks for that. But you, you, you know, my mother was very dear to me. We had a very, very good, uh, loving relationship. And therefore, yeah, I did break down. And I felt a little emotional this morning as well. But I don't cry here because I ain't going to um, account to what they crap, this church crap, oh, and the amphibian saying, that means all demand. So I want to cry here for spoil this show. So I will contain my emotions. But here, the chief, I, I'm saying that what is going on on the border. We got word that the Venezuelans are massing troops on the border. Um, there's a voice note that came out circulating. Um, it went viral of what is going on. And the chief of staff came out with a statement. They have here, I, um, he says, no need to panic about Venezuela troop movement. That is what the chief of staff of the Guyanese Defense Force, uh, Brigadier Omar Khan, is reported to have said. They go, it says, the article says the chief of staff of the Guyanese Defense Force Brigadier Khan on Tuesday indicated that there was no need for Guyanese to be worried about the movement of Venezuelan soldiers in the area of the border with Guyana. He's quoted as saying, I quote, if there's any need to alert on, on developments outside of the norm, we have a duty to make it known. That is what he told Demerara Waves online. Um, multiple, and Demerara Waves is saying multiple other sources have also told Demerara Waves online, online news that the increased presence of Venezuelan soldiers 
was part of an ongoing operation to root out illegal mining. Now they are, the chief of staff goes on and he's quoted as saying here now again, there are several pieces of information being circulated via social media on the subject topic and from various sources, which must always be verified. Brigadier Khan sought to release, to re, sought to reassure Guyanese that the GDF stands ready to protect Guyana's borders. And he's quoted there saying, our borders remain an integral component of our sovereignty and our defense force has a constitutional responsibility to, to protect him. End of quote. One of the sources, and this is, um, Demarawi has gone on to say, one of the sources said informal communication between Guyana and Venezuelans on both sides of the border do not indicate that Venezuelan military troops in, 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 in a number of areas has anything to do with the territorial controversy between the two neighboring South American states. Meanwhile, opposition shadow minister Amanza Walton Desir has called and for a phrase minister Utad to summon an urgent meeting of the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Relations to brief to brief bipartisan body on developments concerning the territorial controversy and the increasing arrival of Venezuelan immigrants. And she's quoted there as saying, the critical issue of the border controversy and the escalating Venezuelan migrant crisis demand our immediate attention. These matters have clear implications for our national security stability and international relations. And it is therefore essential that we address these challenges with the diligence and vigilance that this state of affair warrants. That is what she's saying. Now, let, let me go on. The GDF, the, the, the Guided Defense Force, the TILSA, is saying, as I read here just now, that there's no need for panic. And he's saying that this is there's no unusual buildup. But I saw a document which purports to be a intelligence assessment. And let me read part of it, because this document is saying that on Monday, the 16th of October, 2023, the Venezuelan military deployed 150 combatants from its rapid reaction unit of the strategic region of integral maritime and island defense to an area close to Guyana maritime zone. They are deployed aboard a T aboard a T-92 multipurpose transport vessel. Their justification for deployment is to defend the Esequibo, which by law, history, and justice belongs to Venezuela. That is what they're saying. They were deployed with the mission and commitment to occupy the territorial security base. It goes on to say, this release, this intelligent assessment, they the increase the deployment of the Venezuelan military personnel to the region could increase the risk of a conflict between the two countries and adversely affect regional stability. Furthermore, the language used in the statement, such as by law, history, and justice, suggests a strong nationalistic sentiment in Venezuela regarding the territory. So I'm saying the chief of staff is saying nothing unusual, right? We need we not panic, but this. Uh, report purported to have come from the intelligence unit is saying something different. And I say here is the matter is a question now of credibility. It's a question of credibility. I've been saying all along that the government the, the, and all its branches, security branches, need to be more um, forthright and be more proactive in this issue. But I wait until something has been circulated now and the chief of staff is trying to say, well, this thing basically saying it is a rumor. But then who to believe? Who to believe? Many of these people, when they come out with these things, lack they lack credibility. I am not saying that the chief of staff is not true. I am not saying that the other thing is not um, the bill up that is um, talked about on this voice note. But I, what I'm saying that they need to make sure that the Guyanese public is made aware of all that is going on. That when something like that circulate, then you, you play catch up. That is not the way it should be. And they talk about national security, you have a national um, security advisor silent. You have the president, I said, silent. You have the vice president who he goes on his, um, the TV and so on, he views out every um, Thursday. You have the attorney general. All of these people are there saying about everything else except 
what is going on on the border. And as the um, shadow foreign affairs minister said, they're not talking about the influx of Venezuelans into um, the country. They're not talking about that. They're not talking about that. So, um, CC, what are your views on um, the statement by the chief of staff on the intelligence report or the purported intelligence report, which I'm sure you have seen? Well, I've seen the purported intelligence report. I've seen photographs. And, 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 and unless the intelligence report report is, is, is fake news, unless the photographs are fake news, unless the, the voice note that I got from miners operating in the Cuyuni River are fake news, well, then we shouldn't be bothered. But then I believe that we must be bothered. And then the, 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 the Army Chief of Staff has an intelligence background. So what is happening with our intelligence? Are we not gathering intelligence? And we have quite a lot, a lot of bodies. We, we have the Regional Intelligence Committee. We have the special branch. We get a giant in intelligence committee. We, we, get, we get what we call a CIA. And we get one that, that Nanla trying to legalize NISA, NISA, National Intelligence Security Agency. Bill number five of 2023 was piloted. And I think because of concerns by various groups and individuals, it now went with a select committee. Our intelligence must go to work. And we must have credible intelligence. We must have actionable in, in intelligence. I said over and over again, and I'm going to repeat all of my song, monotonous. In time like these, we're operating now that we need to look, dealers must look at the dime. D-I-M-E. Look at things diplomatically. We, we have been doing some diplomatic work, yes, maybe quietly. Our intelligence has got to go to work. Both local and overseas, our intelligence got to work. And we have plenty of bodies that, that need to be active, act, activated. Our military, and I'm talking about the over joint services, I remain in, in, in the late 70s and 80s. I was a sovereign officer working in the interior. And I remember the, uh, policemen and soldiers at strategic location, places like Iturimbang, Kaikan, Ikeriku, Bar Baramito, Morowano, Imbotiro, and other locations. They ensure that all the SOs in charge of those locations were properly trained and trained in jungle warfare. I, I, I still have a, 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 a copy. Of, of, of that manual, I think it, it was edited by the, the by by Corn, Cornell. I think he died now from from Latrille, West Coast Borbis. We used to call him Peck. That they were trained properly, that they were able to 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 respond to things, to to make a, a, a tactical retreat, as the case may be. That persons at the various locations got to be properly trained, properly trained, and then deal with it. I remember the Kirku, which is the Kainu River, when I was a support officer in charge here, we had regularly um, Venezuelan aircraft circling the station, circling the airstrip. When I went to Mbamandai, which is in the Mazaroni River, the same thing happening, the same thing happened, and it's going to continue to happen, that we need to look at our intelligence, we need to look at our military, and don't stand back and say there's not, not, nothing, nothing to be worried about. We need to make sure that we are proactive. And when you look at things internationally, what, what played out in the Middle East, people saying that, that Israel is Israel were caught off guard, that the, 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 the Mossad didn't give them proper intelligence, Shin Bet didn't give them proper intelligence, whereas others are saying that the, the, the Israeli allowed the, the, the Hamas people to do things so that they can do what they're doing right now. The thing is that we have got to be prepared and don't sit back and say there's nothing to alarm me. Say we, we, we must run out of skelter or it must be emotionally disturbed. And I, I know we emotion emotionally disturbed when people talk, speak things about us. That this is about defense of the country. We're talking about over two tours of, of Guyana. And we got to get up and get, and we got to take action. We're bringing in, we're bringing in the, the, the migrants in, in, in boat loads. And quoting from, from, from the, the, the Home Affairs Minister, he said, let's stash away in the platforms in the ocean, waiting for the cover of darkness to, 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 come, to come, come on land. 
maybe that is what his, his intelligence told her told him the thing is that we have got to be serious this is about two thirds of ghana this is where our oil is we, we say we we do the fastest growing economy in the world and we got to protect it and we bring in migrants with open arms trojan horses coming in this country and then we said no not not to be alert what's going on in the border and and then that part of what the, the the intelligence report is saying that where the venezuelans one want, want want to deal with with, with illegal miners illegal miners the illegal in Ghana waters now in venezuela what the Cayuni is Ghana, and there's where the the the, the, the miners are operating and to deal with legal miners is a ggmc Ghana glg mines commission and in their absence the Ghana police force that venezuelan soldiers dealing with illegal miners paul we gotta be serious and we gotta make sure that we are proactive or can't eat our dinner all right or can't eat our dinner we will continue our protest as i said tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock we're going to be there again outside the venezuelan embassy to continue our protest oh, you know cc yesterday i listened to a press conference jointly hosted by mr ramjatan leader of the afc and mr arby norton uh pnc apnu um leader and one of the things that came out of the press conference is that mr norton said that we should stop referring to the Venezuelans as migrants. Because and, and, and analyzing it is correct. He said they are refugees. Because if they are migrants, then there is there should be a part when people migrate to your country, um, there should be a part for citizenship. But they are refugees, and what should be expected that at some stage, if the situation um, gets better in the country, that they go back. But we know that that is not the intention. The intention for them to come here and to occupy, especially as you cable that the Venezuelans are claiming as theirs. Coming out to the press conference yesterday too, um, it was mentioned, you had mentioned it before too, on this program, that some time ago, Vice President Jack Dio wanted to cede a portion of Esquibo to um, Venezuela as part of the settlement. In other words, he wanted to give them part of the land. And you were very clear about passage through those rivers into the Atlantic. And you know, the question was asked, I think it was by Adam Harris yesterday. Um, he asked Mr. Ramjatan as a liar whether that action amongst to treason. And Mr. Ramjatan, as a politician and as a liar, he danced. That is how I can put it. He danced because he says, you know, you don't think so because treason, um, and I'm paraphrasing here. He said treason, he think, is a violent overthrow or attempt to overthrow a government. And I had to go down into my, um, do my research, and I want to tell you, Ramjatan, Kemraj, Prakash, you're wrong. That is not all that treason is. Because if you were saying that is what all treason is, how come Ben Scott was charged for treason? How come the Monroes and um, Wharton were charged for treason? And here were the black the Black's Law Dictionary. Cameras, I'm sure you're familiar um, with that. The Black's Law Dictionary. Hear what they describe treason as. He said the betrayal of one's country by attempting to overthrow the government through waging war against the state or materially aiding its enemies. And another definition says um, another giving aid and comfort to the enemy. He said it is defined as help support, assistance, counsel, encouragement. Uh, they say as an element in the crime of treason, the giving of aid or comfort to the enemy may consist of a mere attempt. It is not essential to constitute the giving of aid and comfort that the enterprise commence should be successful and actually render assistance. That is what the definition says. Giving aid and comfort to the enemy is also considered treason, um, cameras. And I think, I know you know that. But you know, you're dancing as a politician, as a liar. You dance and you dance. But let me say this. The question, therefore, that's not given aid and comfort to the enemy. The question to determine then, um, who is the enemy? And I am saying that given the actions of the Venezuelans, the aggressive actions for the Venezuelans, where they chase both from our, out of our economic zone, 
where they are threatening, they are massing troops. Those are hostile actions. They are, they have, they're going to have a referendum to, to determine whether Esikibo is theirs, even though the matter is before the International Court of Justice. They had a meeting some time ago um, with the president, with all the major, the, 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 the senior military and other functionaries. I am saying that they are acting as enemies. I am saying that they are acting as enemies. And when you talk about aid and comfort, if it is that the vice president, when he was president, wanted to cede land to Venezuela as part of the settlement, then that is aid and comfort. That is aid. So I am saying by definition, it might very well be a treasonous act to have uh, attempted or to be, um, consider giving part of Guyana to Venezuela. I'm also saying that when you're going to go now to write policia, policia on the side of government vehicles, the police vehicles, and have other signs on government vehicles, that is um, aid and comfort, especially when you're doing this in the areas that are claimed by Venezuela. Those areas being regions one, region two, region seven, region eight, and region nine. So you have a situation where Venezuela is laying claim to that part of Ghana, and you, these bright boys, decided that the police vehicles in those regions claimed by Venezuela should have a Spanish word for police, policia written on the side of the vehicle and uh, Spanish signs in the vehicle. And let me remind you that Venezuela is our only Spanish speaking neighbor. And they are the ones who have laid claim to two thirds of Ghana. And then, they, you know, again, let me go through it because I can't assume as a teacher, you can't assume everyone is familiar with the background. In 1899, there was an arbitral award which says that Esquivo belongs to um, Guyana. Venezuela participated in that process. It was um, among the Venezuelans, the British, and the American. In 1905, they did a survey, and the border, as is now, was drawn. Venezuelan again participated in that process. Sometime after, they mounted a, a plaque where Guyana, Venezuela, and um, Brazil meet in Roraima. Venezuela participated in that process. In 1911, at the sanitary, they accepted all the speeches show that Venezuela accepted Esquivo to be in part of Guyana. It was not until 1962, as Guyana was approaching independence, then they raised this issue. They raised this issue about the, in other words, they decided to disregard the 1899 Arbitral Award and they raised this issue. I am reminding people too, and when I mentioned it, um, some time ago, people said they didn't know that. In 1966, uh, let me go back a little. When the border was drawn in 1905, the island of Ancoco was a borderline. So part of Ancoco belongs to Venezuela, and part, the eastern part was Guyana, I think the eastern part, the western part was Venezuela. Since 1966, Venezuela has illegally occupied the part of Ancoco that belongs to Guyana since 1966. And they have not given up, they have not relinquished that island. So now, as you speak to now, they are occupying the earth. More than that, in 1970, as Guyana was approaching Republican status, Venezuelan bombarded entering bank police station and military base, open artillery fire, the police and soldiers had to flee for their life. So they have had this aggression all the while. So now that they come, and um, the matter is before the ICG, but they decide that they're not going to wait on the outcome. And why? Because they know they're going to rule against them. Everything is against them. So they decided that they're going to have a referendum to determine the issue. And they are calling on bilateral talks. Bilateral talks, for 50 years, we had um, bilateral talks. The United Nations Secretary General established what they call a good officer forum to resolve the issue, and it has not been resolved. The coalition government was successful in taking it to the ICJ. Venezuelan objected claiming that the ICJ did not have jurisdiction to inquire into the matter. In April of this year, the ICJ ruled that they have jurisdiction and the matter will be um, ordered by them. And Venezuela still rattling the saber and, and saying also, that we have people in this country who are quiet and the chief of staff is telling us to remain calm. That is what the chief of staff is saying, remain calm, that the movement of the soldiers is nothing to learn. And go on Twitter or X as it is called now, 
there are photographs there showing the Venezuelan in the uh, river craft and so massing along the border. The photographs are there. And the chief of staff is suggesting, yeah, well, well, that is a regular um, deployment. That is what you're suggesting. It's a regular deployment. Regular in the face of all the talks. Even if it's regular in the face of all the talks that we're having now, it should be a cause, a cause for alarm. And we, the public, should be made aware of what is going on. Let me bring me back in a colleague, Mr. Conway, into this thing. CC, but before you comment, CC, um, somebody said Afghanistan get bowled out here yeah, for 130 something. Somebody said that New Zealand rolled them over for 129 or something like that. So yes, um, CC, go ahead. No, there's not a surprise. There's not an upset. Anyway, the thing is that you know we we are not behaving as though we are an independent country. We're not behaving as though we are a republic. We we listening to the Americans. They're trying to over, overthrow the, the get rid of the Venezuelan president. And part of it is the acceptance of migrants in other country and more so Guyana. They listen to the IOM, the International Organization of Migration. And only listening, they're collecting the funding to deal to deal with, 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 with these migrants. That we're gonna end up get more, more, more migrants than than Guyanese. Listen to the IOM. They, they, we, we must be more proactive. We cannot allow people to run this country for us. We talking about two tours and getting back to to Barra Jagdio. We say you give them a pathway through our water for through our waters into the atlantic the atlantic to, to so to speak is where the thing there the atlantic is where the economy is we 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 we, we, we program to 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 have an increase in our economy by by 100 next year that's where the the, the 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 stuff is and we give them a pathway through our rivers into the atlantic yeah? if there is no treason or there is no treason as well i know i got a brush up on my definition like you in terms of look what is what is what is treason they they are their supporters and we need to be formed and the chief of staff too a former intelligence chief of the of, of, of the army he ain't getting intelligence anymore his people ain't working what happened with army intelligence they're not getting anything something is, is, is we, 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 something is definitely wrong with us we taking this thing too lightly we take it to look out. Look what happened in Israel. They took things lightly. They say, I must then get a will to do any kind of work. Then get a will to do any, to, to invade, you know, and that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. And some people say, some will not, not me. Some people say that when they say army intelligence, that's an oxymoron. They say army intelligence is an oxymoron. Now, you know, and some people are saying, a man is saying, you know, uh, Kamrat's dance yesterday. I noted that. I noted that we danced. He didn't want to label um, Barrett. He was afraid of Barrett. Barrett was against Secret Free. Even though Barrett said, uh, said he's a vile man and all of that. And talking about that, he also said yesterday, Kamrat's that is, that when asked about this um, code document that Jagdio dodging from, you know, the former um, Auditor General sued him for $30 million. Kemrat said yesterday that they have worked on some arrangement where the document is to be served on his lawyer, Satram. So uh, he said that that part has been resolved. All I want to tell Barat, I'm giving you free advice. I'm giving you free advice. Remember the last time you, you, your lawyer refused to file a defense and default judgment in the sum of $20 million was awarded and you run on the either your dance. I think you're taking that all the way to the CCJ because recently, the appeal court of Ghana rule against you, and you want to take it there. So make sure this lawyer that you now retain file a defense in the in the appropriate time. Make sure your lawyer file a defense. God, this time is thirty million. It's gone up to thirty million. But you know, we know that that is chop change, right? There's a whole big set of money, but they just pay wicked. They want to pay the twenty million, and I suspect when you get judgment, when judgment is passed against you in this one. You're going to want to pay as well. So you got some free advice 
from our own police. Make sure that your lawyer file the, um, the, the defense. Make sure you file a defense in the uh, prescribed time. Make sure the defense is filed in the prescribed time. Now, you know, um, moving, I mean, moving on, CC, we notice with some concern. Uh, we haven't touched on this for a few weeks because of all issues. Murders. Murders. I noted early Sunday morning, a man from Monrepo riding his bike, a motorcycle with his girlfriend stopped at the traffic light at Ogle. That's what the report said. A car pulled up alongside him and he was killed execution style. He was shot and killed there and then. And reading the story um, from the girl, because they're saying that it, uh, only last month, September, the same man was shot when some Shani was killed in Maripo. If you remember that, there was a killing of one named Shani in Maripo and the girlfriend, his 21-year-old girlfriend, that is the man who was killed um, Sunday morning. Is saying that he was shot in his leg at the same time. So police got a little work to do. Based on all of that, this are, the connections have to be e easy to establish. Should be able to establish the connections fairly easily. A man was shot February, um, last month, September. One man killed. This man injured. And then Sunday morning, he's killed execution style. And the paper is saying that they're not sure it is a link between the two incidents. Well, you pick sense out the nonsense. Who is this man? Who is this man that was killed? What type of business he's in? Those are the things that we would ask as police, you know, old police commanders and so on. That's the type of thing we do a background, a thorough background on the person, his associates, and all of that to get to a motive and to get to who the killers are. The, the report says that the police are going to view the CCTV cameras to try to identify, if they can identify the vehicle that is involved. Well, I wish them luck because you remember when paper shots was killed just a few hundred feet from where the president resides. The vehicle used or the suspect, the vehicle used, the suspected vehicle used in that murder traveled from the area by Palm Court. That is Main and Middle Street, all the way to Swan on the Linden Suicide Highway. And none of them cameras, public or private cameras, were able to pick up that vehicle. So I, I wish you all luck. I hope these cameras are now functioning again. I hope they are functioning because when you add that paper shot execution, the cameras could not have been able to become useful. And sometime thereafter, too, there was another execution. If you remember the Brazilian sitting in a vehicle in um, Regent Street, men roll up with AK 47, cut loose. One man killed, another man was seriously injured. We don't know what happened to, I don't know what happened to the other man who was seriously injured. So we have these disturbing murders. And only last night at Williamsburg on the quarantine, reporters that a man by the name of Sane, I, I, I knew Sane. I knew he had a supermarket there, Sane supermarket at Williamsburg on the quarantine on the, I think that is the southern side of the road. I got to know him because when I was commander there, there was a robbery. And I'm not sure if there was any fatality, but I know there was a robbery. And um, in talking to him, um, I was able to convince him that he should apply for a uh, firearm. He did apply and he did get through with the firearm. So last night, the news says that somebody broke into the place. Um, he was attacked and the man struck him in his head with some wood or metal and he was killed. But not the commander saying this morning that the man or the, the, the assailant was held and the commander is saying that he has confessed to the robbery. Now here you have a situation where a man was murdered, businessman murdered on the quarantine, Williamsburg on the quarantine. And the commander is reported to have said that the man confessed to the robbery. So I'm telling the murder, is, was he, is not he who killed this um, businessman? And we had other murders as well, where a man was stabbed in the um, chapel and killed somewhere in the interior, a woman too was killed in the interior. So you have these murders that are continuing. We don't have enough time today to deal with all the traffic accident as well. On the next program, maybe we will deal with that. Because I want to go into this, um, the thing that I indicated in the announcement, we got to talk about the continued hypocrisy of the vice president. But CC, before we move on, your say, your say on this, um, these murders, these disturbing murders. The, 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 the bottom line is, Paul, that we don't have good detectives 
and more so detectives, detective officers, we call them DDO, Divisional Detective Officer. I remember days we had a lot of good men, Michael Marx, Henry Chester, Charles Allen, Philip Armstrong, and, 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 and uh, um, Marlon Chapman, and a whole whole host of other things. But you mentioned in, 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 in your presentation that commander will ask questions. I wonder if these commanders ask questions, you know, or if they're asking the right questions and giving proper directions to, to, to the detective. As happened, particularly in Barbies, before I go here, that the major crime unit has gone in there. And when things happen, the major crime unit flies in there and takes over the investigation. Paul, you remember we as commanders, no major crime unit in community division and take over. No, 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 no investigation. They come and they lend support if they come at all, but they can't come and take over investigation. And just like with the, I got mentioned the, the, the 50 million robbery at, at, the, at the regional office. There's a four people who were involved. One apparently was shot dead by the police and they arrested three persons, three persons gone before the court and not a, and, and we hear anything that any money was recovered, three persons get charged and we hear anything money and the, the reward in Barbies there is that a substantial amount of money was recovered but not, but not declared. So the thing is that we don't have good investigators, divisional detective officers, and name them, name, name one, one to me. They ain't get none. And apart from divisional detective officers, you used to get good stage, good detective sergeants coming up. You hear about Garden Gillows, and hear about this body and the other body, them, them, them people in Devon now. Detective, divisional detective officers, they are an endangered species. They are an, an endangered species. And if the commanders don't ask questions, the commanders don't give direction, well, we can get unsolved mur murders, plenty. And coming back to the, the cameras, they say that those cameras will replace boots on the ground. They replace boots, but we ain't getting nothing from them, nothing at all from them. And we ain't even seen boots or boots on the ground. So, and we 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 sharing but no, but no, no crime figures anymore and anymore. We ain't able no crime figures anymore, no serious crime figures anymore. And even the Barbies commander, you talking about robbery when, when there's a murder. Is he said that part of what they're doing is profiling? So they must be profiling people who getting people as suspects, spread the name all across the, 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 the social media, and they can't charge no 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 nobody. The Rosal murder with with the with the, 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 the mother and 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 her and her son. Nothing. A lot of people are arrested, the photographs, the name all in the papers, and so far nobody could, could be charged. And several of the murders about the place there. And they're not, not making any headway because they don't have good divisional detectives and they don't have good competent commanders. And I see some people mentioning some other names. Alvin Smith. I, I remember um people like um Davidson, Arlie Davidson, your own squad mate, Ivan Walters, you had um, Philbert Adams, you had people like uh, Philip Armstrong. I mean, as a commander, when you have those forces, um, uh, um, Louis Crawford, when you're a commander and you have those forces as a um, divisional detective officer, you feel confident. Caesar, they, not this one, they, they, they are talking about uh, Old Czar. All of those men were top class detective, Vernon Gentle, and all of those men top class, well trained, and you're correct. One of the problems you have now, you have people who are there and they don't have the competencies and that is the problem. And, and as I've said before, many times you don't, you don't blame them, you know. You blame them, them, the system does not allow for them to be properly trained and get the type of exposure, both local and overseas, to, to make good um, detective, right? Good detective, uh, Tyndall, somebody said Tyndall, Joe Tyndall, I remember Joe, Joe's a squad mate of mine and the junior officers course. You had so many good persons. Only last week we were talking um, at a place that we normally meet. Um, somebody said, yeah, Thomas Bizet. You had um, one of the best homicide 
detectives in this part of the world, Michael Marks, Michael Marks, yeah, um, you got um, Neil talking about uh, Kennard Barron. Those were fantastic. Um, Roy Sharma, Roy Sharma, and all of those people, fantastic policemen and detectives. And let me say what happened in those days. Many times you had the roadmen. You had the people who knew the people on the road. You had the investigators, you had the roadmen. So when a crime is committed, people like Sobers, people like Garden Gillows, people like um, October, and all of those men, them men can tell you within a short space of time. They had the contacts to tell you who was um, those persons, right? Uh, there is even mention the name of Michael get more trouble because he is a very good police indeed, but he's not favored by people in the administration. He is one of the best, then is your correct. He's one of the best, but if we talk in AMA, they're going to start to pressure you even more. So those people have to be trained. They have to be trained. That is the only way you're going to be able to get proper investigations and, and, and um, not rely on confessions. I'm talking about that the next time. There have been several cases in recent times that have been dismissed. We're going to deal with that the next time. But I want to go now, share the life, share the life, because we're going to go now into this main subject. The vice president, the hypocrisy of vice president Bharat Jagdew. And why I say this? You know, in recent times, the vice president at his weekly press conference calling all other people criminal, people who have never been charged, people who have never been arrested, they are labeled as criminals. And let me make it clear that I'm not here to defend any one of those persons. I think people like Burke and Chapman and all of those persons have done very well in defending themselves. But I'm saying that the statements by the vice president have some adjectives here. They are, they, they, they are odious. And, um, and I have so many other adjectives to describe uh, what the president, the vice president um, is saying, you know? And let, let, me, let me move straight. It's revolting. It's repulsive. It's repugnant, disgusting, obnoxious, obscene, and offensive for the Vice President Bar Jagdeo to sit on these press conferences and refer to persons as criminals, people who have never been charged with any offense, never been convicted. Because even if you're charged, there's something called the presumption of innocence. And even if you are charged, you should have, you should, um, have that presumption. Remember when the allegation was made against Nigerian Dharmla that he um, did what he did to that young um, indigenous girl, then they jump out, you know, the, the, the attorney general and the vice president say, oh, he's presumed innocent. Yeah, there's a presumption of innocence, but he's applied across the board. So how can the vice president be labeling people criminals when they have never been charged, they have never been convicted? And I'm saying this, that if we are going to use that measurement that the vice president is using, that is, an allegation is made by the individual and he is then deemed to be a criminal, then the biggest criminal is the vice president himself because serious allegations were made against him. If you recall in the uh, Vice News uh, article, the, 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 the sting operation, they alleged that the vice president was taking um, 500 million US dollars bribe to, to facilitate projects. And this is an allegation, when they did the, oper the, 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 the vice news sting operation, they were entertained in the living room of the vice president. And the man Su Jirong, who the, pres the vice president said is his tenant, had the privilege of taking these people in the vice president's living room, ostensibly to negotiate some deal. And then he's saying that he's not, well, If again, I'm saying that if you were to use that um, his measure to determine who's a criminal, then there we have that. And let me tell you some other instant, um, things as well. Let me tell you some others. This is an article in, in back in 2009 where the president at the time, Barrett Jagdeo said, the government has no plans to establish a commission of inquiry into accusation into accusations leveled against Minister of Health Dr. Leslie Ramsamy by former attorney for Roger Khan Robert Simmels. President Jack the other press conference at the office of the president yesterday was responding to a query. Simmel 
that Simmels is alleging that it was Dr. Ramsamy who helped to facilitate the purchase of a laptop computable, computer capable of triangulating and intercepting telephone calls. Simmels also alleges that Dr. Ramsamy assisted in facilitating constraining to you in the use of the equipment. Then he goes, the president uh, at the time, Jack Joe said, we can't be selective about these accusations. So I have asked Minister Leslie Ramsamy about it. And he said to me that he was never involved in any such act. And at this point in time, until I get information to the contrary, I have to believe him. That is what the president at the time was saying. And the people produce document from the company in Miami to show Dr. Ramsamy's signature on the document. And why do I say this? Because it is said that that piece of computer was used to intercept um, a lot of people labeled as criminals and they were killed. They were executed, they were killed. So isn't Ramsamy, by your um, calculation, isn't he a criminal too? Isn't he a marksman? Isn't he a criminal too? And let me go on further. Let me go on further. You remember one, another minister of health, Barry Ramsaran? And the, the thing says, Guyana Health Minister Barry Ramsaran was fired on Wednesday for threatening to slap and strip a female rights activist in an altercation caught on tape outside a court. In, in the April 20th incident, women's and children's rights campaigner Charlene Nagir confronted the minister outside the tribunal where he was leading supporters for the former president Bar Jagbio accused of raci making racist remarks. During the argument recorded by journalists present, Ram, Ram Saran told Nagir, shut your mouth and get out of my face, you idiot. Get the hell out of my face. Fuck off, you're a little piece of shit. Then he goes on to say, I will slap her ass, you know, just for fun. I can have some of my women strip her. That is Ram Saran. So he's not a criminal. And then he ended up being charged. Everybody, everybody, the next thing, he ended up being charged for the same incident. He ended up being charged and placed before the court for the same incident. So is he not a criminal? This is not only an allegation made against him. It's a case where he was charged. And you didn't, you're not saying anything. But let me go to the next one. Let me go to a next one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go to the next one. Here it is, Starbrook News, March the 3rd, 2017. Former presidential press officer Kwame McCoy was yesterday found guilty of assaulting rights activist Mark Benchcock on the March 20, in March 2011, and he was ordered to pay a fine of $20,000. McCoy of Great Diamond East Bank, Demerara, was given two weeks to pay the fine by the magistrate, or he would have to spend an alternative of one month in prison. It was the second time that he was found guilty of assault. They said Mackay was charged with assault, stealing a laptop, and damaging a vehicle that belonged to Bench Cup on March 15, 2011, at Diamond East Bank Demeraro. However, the magistrate, um, in handing down her sentence, later told him that she believed the evidence that he was present, that was presented to her by Bench Cup. She, however, added that there was no evidence to find McCoy guilty of the simple larceny and malicious damage to property charges since the virtual complainant, that is Ben Cup, did, did admit in court that he did not see McCoy coming, committing the acts since he had run away from the scene. Additionally, the prosecution witnesses were once again a no-show and the prosecutor was therefore unable to present a case against McCoy on two charges that were eventually um, dismissed. More about the same thing. For Mackay, the conviction is a second for assault. In 2012, Mackay was found guilty of committing an assault for gun butting a man after a row over election campaign poster. Mackay was found guilty for assaulting and using threatening language on Collins Short, for which he was fined $70,000. He, he, he's not a criminal, he fined. Assault, he's charged, he's fine. He's not a criminal. Let me go on. Let me go on. 
no, no specific order, but I'm again the incidents. There it is again. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go too far. Don't go far. I gotta get the docs all lined up. Here this one. There this one. PPP member. PPP members. Kwame McCoy, Jason Abdullah, along with former bodyguard Sean Hines, were yesterday charged with assaulting newspaper columnist and activist Freddie Kisun, whom they accused of throwing human feces during an attack in 2010. They threw shit on Freddie, and it looked like this shit got a delayed effect. They show true. And then um, the attack to coordinate Nigel's supermarket. Kisun has recounted to this newspaper that he had just started, he had just returned to his car after an unplanned stop at the supermarket when a very squatty guy threw a bowl of pungent human feces directly in his face. That's what he is saying. Directly in his face, um, he eating. Now, it goes on to say, it goes on to say the same matter. Um, It goes on to say here, this is the next matter. And they said, uh, Freedom House staff are jailed for throwing feces on Freddie Kassoon. Same matter. Principal magistrate yesterday sentenced Freedom House operative Jason Abdullah to six months imprisonment for throwing feces on newspaper columnist and social activist Freddie Kassoon after finding him guilty of the charge. The magistrate took a while to outline the, to the court all the reasons for finding Abdullah guilty. The magistrate told Abdullah that she was the of the opinion that, that McCoy gave him directives to throw feces on Kisun and to record the incident. Hear what the magistrate said. Let me read this back. The magistrate said, the magistrate told Abdullah, this is after she found him guilty and were given her reasons, that she is of the opinion that Kwame McCoy gave him directives to show feces on Kisun and to record the incident. She goes on to say that the court finds that Abdullah had knowledge of the assault, which he watched, and then reported to Kwame McCoy that the crime was successful. And she says further, oh, this, this is um, the lawyer telling the court that his client, that is um, the same man, Jason Abdullah, was simply following the directions of his employer, Kwame McCoy, who pays his bills. And, but he's not labeled a criminal. As a matter of fact, he's now a minister in the government. He's now a minister in the government with a rap sheet like this. And the vice president, don't call me or buy a jack deal something, say we should report here as vice president. <laughs> I want to make sure it is known. He is not a criminal, but people who have never been charged are criminals. Now, let me go on. It is done there. It is not finished there. Yeah, Diane. Diane say, oh, wow, yeah. It, it, let me, let me, um, let me, let me read on. Let me read on before I bring in CC. Investigators probing the murder of social activist Cove Cote Coming Ring. I've arrested former press officer of the office of the president under the PPP government, Kwame McCoy. This is Kaicho News, February 18, 2016. McCoy was arrested yesterday after he turned himself into the police at the Criminal Investigations Department, Ivlery. This was after police had visited his diamond housing scheme, his bank, the Mara resident, to arrest him. This incident, the murder, is occurred on March 10, 2015. A reliable source close to the investigation said that detectives are obtaining vital information from the persons in custody. This newspaper understands that McCoy has been fingered by one of those persons. Police have already charged Regan Rajiskal Gayboy for the murder, but investigations were always convinced, investigators were always convinced that others were involved in the hit. One of the men in custody, Sean Hines, had in some explosive television interviews, fingered McCoy and Abdullah as being involved in the murder. And yeah, 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 yeah. And you have um, the president talking, but um, yeah, no, no, he is not a, a, a criminal. But people who have never been charged, allegations made against them, they, 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 um, they, they are criminals. And Air Florida, 
It has been more than two weeks since Minister of Public Affairs Kwame McCoy was accused of assaulting Member of Parliament Tabita Sabaru Ali. And to date, no progress has been reported in the investigation. Remember they say, Member in Parliament is accused of assaulting. It's an accusation. It's an allegation. But the allegation was made. The allegation was made. And here again, I profile PVP Progressive Party member Kwame McCoy was yesterday detained by the police in, in the um, and is currently in custody as the probe into the murder of political activist Kwame Wing continues. His arrest came after another of the party's member, Jason Abdullah, and uh, Shana is another man, were taken to custody by ranks of the Criminal Investigation Department on Monday in relation to the same matter. Crime Chief Wendell Blanham yesterday confirmed McCoy's arrest. He said that ranks of the CID went to Diamond East Bank Demerara yesterday to arrest McCoy, but he was not, he was nowhere to be found. However, he later turned up at CID headquarters in Blairy and was detained. Also on the investigation, listen to say, listen carefully. Also on the investigation was Rajput Narain, the ex-bodyguard of former Attorney General Alan Nandalal. He was also taken to custody on August the 7th last year and questioned what was released without being charged. His lawyer said that although the police told Narain he was being arrested in connection with crime wing uh, investigation, while in police custody, he was never questioned about it. There was, however, a confrontation between Narain and Rajiks. Nandalal denied he was in any way connected to the murder of Krami Wing. Krami Wing was shot dead on the evening of March 10, 2015 at Diamond and East Bank, where he was urging residents to vote against the incumbent PVPC at the May 11 general elections. He was shot five times, including three times in the head. For weeks prior to his death, listen carefully, for weeks prior to his death, he had held a one-man protest outside Nandalal's office calling for his resignation over controversial statements he made during a telephone conversation with a Kaicho news reporter that was made public. The PPP in a statement issued following Abdullah's arrest on Monday said that the ranks of the Ghana police force took him into custody for unknown reasons. It said he was taken to CID headquarters and was being moved around in a suspicious fashion. I am saying all of these things to tell you that the vice president is very hypocritical and very selective in who we call him criminal. Because based on what is being said about uh, Kwame McCoy, about Leslie Ramsamy, about Barry Ramsaran, about um, Abdullah who works at, um, who was convicted and jailed, convicted and jailed, for throwing shit in Freddie Kisun's face, and the vice president is silent on those. Let me bring in Conway. Let me bring in Mr. Conway um, to get this piece of this. Mr. Conway, how selective, how hypocritical can the vice president be? Well, Paul, you've said it all, and you have evidence that, that nobody can contradict. Persons who have been convicted and the minister of government persons who have been convicted and they're closely associated with senior government persons walking about the place with, with, with them and we Paul you and I who are using our constitutional right to freedom expressions or expression the attorney general branded us as an anarchist, an anarchist and saying that we have no place in society. Was that a dog whistle? But we have God with us and we are not afraid. We are not pussy-limnous. We are not timid. We are not afraid. We are going to carry on the work and we are going to expose them as, as we find the evidence. And we are not going to talk to things that we don't have evidence. Anything we talk, we have concrete evidence and the hypocrisy of the vice president. And let me go me so is the second vice president because the prime minister, according to Article 102, is the first vice president and as president over any and all the other vice presidents. So the second vice, vice president um 
talking all, 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 all sorts of things that you're a criminal when you speak up but when you get convicted when you get convicted for crime you are not a criminal what hypocrisy hypocrisy indeed as, as you said and again i am saying um this is based on what the vice president is saying he's calling people criminal and those persons have not been charged there might be allegations against them how can you label you are a vice president how can you label people as criminal when they have not been charged and convicted because i say again that even if a person is charged it's an allegation and there's a presumption of innocence until that person is proven guilty but here you have persons who are not charged persons who are not found guilty are labeled excuse me as labeled criminals by the vice president and people like Kwame McCoy and Abdullah and all of these people, Barry Ramsaran, who was charged in the case of Kwame McCoy, Abdullah found guilty, fined and sentenced in, in, in um, different cases. And they are not um, criminals. The vice president himself was on a private criminal charge instituted against him by Christopher Ram, attorney at law. That's the same matter he was attending with magistrate court um, whip when um, the incident took place between Barry Ramsaran and um, Nagir. Because Ramsaran said that he had gone there to lend support to the former president who was attending court and the incident occurred. So he's not a criminal. The Vice News report, allegation against him, taken bribe, says Sue. Remember the story? Sue, when the lady back you up and said, who is Sue Jaran? He said, oh, oh, Sue, 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 oh, 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 that is my tenant. A tenant with access to your living room can carry people into your living room, a lot of strange people into your uh, living room to transact business. I remember he said, remember he said, oh, Sue deals with that part. I am in the government and I facilitate from the government side. Now, Sue is a private citizen. What part were you referring to? What part Sue deals with were you referring to? And what happened? No investigation. They say Sue Sue. I can't find um, Sue to solve this document. In. What has become of that? Maybe tomorrow at your press conference, you might want to tell us what has happened to this Sue matter. We are taking Sue for $50 million. Let us know what has happened with that matter. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this again. I am not representing anyone. Rick Ford Bork, who the vice president has been calling criminals and has labeled us sort of thing, has been doing a great job as rep representing himself. I am I'm not competent to represent uh, Bork, but I'm just highlighting the hypocrisy of the vice president when he's calling people criminal who have not been charged. Yes, allegation might have been made. And I'm saying that even if allegation is made, even if the post is charged, there is a presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty by a competent court. That is in the constitution. So even then, a man is um, allegation made, the person is arrested, the person is charged, the person is still not a criminal. Still not a criminal. But I'm further saying that if we were to use your reasoning, if we were to use your reasoning, that the mere allegation against a person and, and his labels are criminal. But then you are a criminal allegation were made against you, credible allegations. You were charged privately by Christopher Ram. So you are a criminal. You are your uh, the current president was charged, 19 fraud charges. So he's a criminal. The attorney general was charged. So according to your reckoning, he's a criminal. Your finance minister, Ashni Singh, was charged again. So therefore, he's a criminal. You have Brassington. All of these people charged charge and they are not being labeled as criminal because again i say the fact that the person is charged including the president including the attorney general including the minister of finance including brasselton even when they're charged there is a presumption of innocence they're not guilty of any crime and therefore it is obnoxious it is odious it is repulsive for the vice president to be labeling people as criminals who have not been charged yeah and then damn lal too Damlan had one of the most serious allegations leveled against him not so long ago, where it's alleged that he groomed, he raped, and he buggered a 16-year-old um, indigenous girl. The evidence was compelling. 
compelling. And by your matrix, he is a criminal because the allegation was made, he was arrested, and the DPP then works some magic. The DPP works some magic to say that he should not be charged. So I'm using your standards. I am using your standards. And I'm saying that people got to speak out about these things. You can't get a vice president. I know he goes there and he runs and he raves, or he rails as the, 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 um, the attorney general had accused me of ranting and railing. And what? People sit there quietly to listen to what he says. And then when legal um, documents, when he's sued, the man ducking and hiding. I read this morning um, editorial in the Starbuck News where the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, has decided to add seven um, other sports to the Olympics in 2028. Man, I, if I had known, I would have lobbied for them to add ducking and whaling because the vice president seems very good at that. Nine times, according to um, Gulseran and Kemraj on the time, they attempted to serve the court document and him nine times and he ducked. And the one said that he didn't know that they were looking for him. They went to the office of the president. They went to Freedom House. That's what they claim. They went to his private residence at Good for Wachtin. And the man said, when I go to Good for Wachtin, the guy said he's sleeping and he cannot be disturbed. That's what they're saying. When they went to the office of the president on one occasion, the guard called the secretary. The secretary wanted to know if it had to do anything with the um, Gulseran matter. And they said, well, the, 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 the court marshal is alleged to have said, but she can't discuss that on the phone. And then the secretary said, oh, yeah, they're in office. The man hiding. The man is hiding. So I want that to be an, an Olympic sport so we can get the first gold medal. You know, at the Olympic level, you only get one medal. Um, Paris get a bronze medal. Um, in boxing, we ain't got one. So this is a good chance for us to get a gold medal. In ducking, snooping, and pudooping, as the boys used to say. Um, Kochima say you're snooping and pudooping. So maybe um, that can be an Olympic sport so we can get our Olympic medal. Yeah, ducking, the man like um, Father Fox. You know, our, our so come on, Calypso man. Father Fox song, a beautiful song. You're ducking. If you see me ducking, I don't mean bad, me boss to see, so I ducking. If you see me whine, 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 and I joke, 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 and I ducking. So that's what happened. The man ducking. He ducking. CC, let me get your closing remarks, my brother. We don't know how to leave. Let me hear your closing remarks. CC, we are hearing you. We can see your mouth walking up like there's a new Olympic sports. You're walking up, but we can't hear you. All right, CC, that seems to have a problem. Hope you can hear me. Because CC seems to have a problem with his um, audio. You are hearing him good all the time. And all of a sudden now we're bringing back. We can't hear CC. Can't hear for his closing remarks. But folks, um, as we said, those song, um, are you hearing me? Let me hear if you are hearing you. Or if I should just cut off. If you're hearing me, or you just cut off. Yeah, all right, folks. Um, we, 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 what, we have been over our and half. We are our hour and a half, and I, I want to close um, this morning. And let me tell you, as I indicated, if you're hearing me, then you're going to hear what I'm saying. Um, we, 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 we did say Monday, you're, you're hearing me, Samuel said, thanks, Samuel, you're hearing me, Monday, there will be no program in Monday because um, we have court. No, I'm not seeing him muted at my end. I can't see his mic being muted, but he, he, he's talking, but we can't hear him. Anyhow. I am saying there will be no program on Monday because we have court on Monday. Monday, this conspiracy to commit fraud charge is supposed to continue. Um, they, 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 so we are going to be in court on Monday. We are thinking that maybe we can make up on Sunday. I'm not sure as yet. But again, I would want to encourage you to um, follow the page. Only yesterday, I think it was, Facebook informed me that we have 5,000 followers on this page, we are a young um, um, entity. They say we have 5,000 followers on the page, and I uh, want to thank all those persons who have been following. I also noted, I also noted that many of you 
on this program, even though you are regulars, you have not followed me on, um, you're not following the page speaking out on Facebook. You also have not subscribed to the channel on YouTube. Please do so to help popularize the pro uh, program. I know it's very popular, but we want to make it more popular so that people can know what is going on. So Monday we have court. Um, we are thinking, all things being equal, that may be Sunday. We can do a program because we have a lot of other issues to speak on. And we don't want time to pass for too long for them to get stale, right? So we are thinking about doing something on Sunday. We will let you know. Once you follow, once you subscribe, you will know when we are going to be on. You're going to get the notification. So, folks, um, time really flies when you're enjoying yourself. Yes, um, I know, sir, you know. I know Ducking, Father Fox, Father Fox, Ducking. And um, until either Sunday or Wednesday, we are sure which, we will let you know. Stay safe. Remember to keep, um, remember to stay safe. The roads are dangerous. COVID is still lingering. Dengue is still lingering. So until then, until whenever we meet again, I want to encourage you again to be safe. And um, God bless. Bye.